Welcome to AccuWeather's Ask the Experts. I'm your host, Jeff Cornish. On this show, we go beyond the forecast, giving you the how and why on all the cool and interesting things that you've wondered about and always wanted to ask in the fields of weather, space, and science. And today, we're going to talk about the oceans and seas, exploration, and research. And we're talking to someone who uh, wants to create what he has described as the International Space Station of the Deep Sea. And it is my pleasure to welcome our expert, ocean conservationist and aquanaut, Fabian Cousteau, and uh, obviously uh, that, that is a familiar last name uh, for many reasons. Uh, and Fabian is the third generation of Cousteau's exploring and teaching us about underwater life. And this started with his grandfather, Jacques Cousteau, and continued with his father, Jean-Michel. So Fabian, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be here, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Well, this is great stuff, and it's an honor to talk to you and have uh, some time here with you. Uh, so we're going to talk more about your grandfather and father, but also you. You've done some amazing things, and you continue to do that. Uh, so uh, I imagine growing up uh, as a kid with these two monumental figures in your life, it may be uh, hard not to be influenced to work in this field and to discover more. I'm going to blame it squarely on the ocean. Um, although uh, having uh, a grandfather or grandparents and parents who are all uh, very curious about the ocean world and uh, went and explored for decades, um, you know, once you immerse yourself into the ocean and see its wonders for the first time, uh, for me, it was my classroom growing up. Uh, and I've never lost the curiosity and the desire to go longer, deeper and further. And uh, you're always working on something. One big project that you're currently working on is uh, Proteus, which is basically going to be a, an international space station of the deep sea. So what kinds of things are you hoping to study with this? That, that's a great example, a great illustration. Proteus uh, being named after the eldest son of Poseidon, who was the uh, shepherd of the sea and the keeper of knowledge, is really the, the image that we'd like to portray for this most advanced uh, international space station uh, under the sea uh, and what we would be studying with that uh, all sorts of things from analogs for space to why climate change uh, is reacting the way it is in our various uh, parts of the world whether we're underwater or above because as you know the ocean is our great barometer uh, and has a, a very big role to play in those kinds of situations as well as uh, microplastics dissolution uh, hydrocarbon etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera, and the sexy stuff finding new species and new cures for uh, different diseases uh, such as cancer uh, that, that that's really the essence of exploration is the unknown and looking uh, at the undersea rainforest that's really, really fascinating. And Fabian, would this be one stationary station or would there be multiple? Would they be able to move? What kind of features are they going to have? These are great questions that we've really wrestled with and, and ironed out over the last few years. Uh, did we want to be mobile? Did we want to be stationary? And for all sorts of reason, for, especially for mid and long term research, being stationary is uh, a lot more efficient than having a mobile platform. There are mobile platforms out there already, you know, uh, satellites, um, uh, AUVs, which are autonomous vehicles, submarines, boats, diving, etc. We're really aiming to be that missing tool in the toolbox of ocean exploration, which gives us unprecedented access to the bottom world the way the others just simply can't. And where might this be planted when it is built? <laughs> I love your word planting. Um, we use it a lot. Uh, the the first of these uh, stationary space stations will be in Curacao. Curacao, for those who don't know, is one of the uh, southernmost islands in the Caribbean. It's a chain from uh, Aruba, Bonaire and Curacao. Uh, they're Dutch protectorates or munis municipalities. And uh, that really gives us a strategic location on one of the last two remaining accruing coral reefs in the entire Caribbean. So we're, we get to explore a very little known uh, coral reef ecosystem, and we get to be uh, in a place that's got a lot of advantages, both in shallow and deep water, which for us is extraordinarily important for all the various types of research that we're aiming to do. Have you encountered any big challenges uh, in the process getting you to this point? 
there are always challenges with these uh, out of the box ideas uh, when we're pushing the boundaries of the known, when we're looking at uh, different approaches that are unconventional. Uh, you know, of course, uh, fundraising is always uh, one of those things. But uh, luckily for us, we're, we're doing well in that department uh, and we'll keep pushing forward on that. But being in the ocean 24-7 in situ gives us uh, a, a platform to work from for weeks at a time uh, that gives us uh, unprecedented access to the bottom world in the sense that we can go out as saturation divers, as literally as aquanauts, into the water column 10, 12, or more hours a day, uh, which gives us that, that access that uh, we simply can't have any other way, especially that human technological interface uh, that everyone is driving at these days. If we go back about uh, 10 years to 2014 and the inspiration for Proteus Mission 31, uh, where you yes. honored your grandfather's original underwater living experiment by doing your own undersea expedition for 31 days. Uh, I'd get a little wrinkly after that length of time. Uh, what did you learn from that expedition and uh, how does that play into getting ready for Proteus? Well, you know, Proteus is really built on the pioneering efforts of past generations of aquanauts, including, of course, the ones that have had the privilege of living on Aquarius. And even previous to that, uh, with my grandfather's pioneer efforts of building the first underwater habitats uh, back in the 1960s. Now, Aquarius was at that time the only remaining under sea marine platform, a glorious 400 internal square feet. So if you live in New York City or Paris or Kuala Lumpur, I'm sure you're, you're very familiar with living uh, with six roommates in uh, 400 square feet of space. Uh, and that's what we did underwater. But what happened there was twofold. We had two hypotheses, uh, one or two experiments. One, how much science can we do in 31 days of full lunar cycle? And uh, do people care and how can we reach the vast, uh, the general public that may never get a chance to go scuba diving or even snorkeling? And on both those accounts, uh, it just further proved that there's a real need and necessity for having these underwater marine laboratories strategically placed in different parts of the world. That makes great sense. So what was the most difficult part of living underwater for 31 days? What, well, as a French person, I'd say the most difficult part for me was the food. The food was absolutely awful, uh, quite literally astronaut food or freeze-dried food. Uh, because we burn three times as many calories in saturation to keep our bodies warm, and because of the aerobic activity of scuba diving, we had to eat three times as much of that terrible food. Now... <laughs> Now, aside from being slightly facetious on that, uh, the the length of time being uh, just separated from friends and family uh, is always difficult because as a saturation diver, you might as well be on the far side of the moon. Uh, it's just as remote. It's just as uh, much of an extreme environment. Uh, and as opposed to scuba diving recreationally, where you can go back to the surface anytime you want, here we have to undergo extensive decompression obligations before we reach back to the surface and go back home. And so with that said, um, little creature comforts were, were some of our uh, psychological um, accoutrement that would allow for us to really be able to withstand psychologically those, those separations. And those are really good analogs for space exploration and colonization. That's very interesting. It is a head game, I'm sure, uh, in many, many ways. Well, we do want to get to our first viewer question now. This comes from Ben in South Carolina. And Ben writes, what was your life growing up like uh, as the grandson of Jacques Cousteau? <laughs> I get this question a lot. Thank you, Ben. That's a great question. Um, it sounds sexy. Uh, because I had the the uh, privilege of diving from the ripe old age of four years old, scuba diving, uh, I've been on expeditions since I was seven. And that was the classroom growing up. Uh, it was also the training ground. And lest you think that just because I was the grandson of... Uh, I got the glorious task of scraping the barnacles off the hull for an entire summer as my first job. Uh, and then secondarily, uh, painting the rails and then eventually worked my way up to doing the grade, graveyard shift uh, at the helm of Calypso while we were underway on expedition. Eventually, uh, I did get the uh, honor of being able to join the dive crew 
in which uh, you see some of that imagery in those past films. Uh, but it was a, a real learning experience, a humbling one, and one that was amazing. Uh, I could not express how integral that was to why uh, I am who I am today. Uh, well, we're looking forward to speaking with you some more here just after the break, and uh, we have plenty more to talk about. Uh, but uh, coming up later in WeatherWise, we're going to be diving into the life of Jacques Cousteau, Fabian's grandfather, with three interesting things you might not know about him. And also, we're going to talk about Fabian's dedication to conservation and how his research is helping people learn about the deep blue sea. We're going to answer more of your viewer questions as well when Ask the Experts returns. Welcome back to AccuWeather's Ask the Experts. I'm your host, Jeff Cornish, and we are back with aquanaut and ocean conservationist Fabian Cousteau as we talk uh, about the further exploration and adaptation to potential life, even, under the sea for humans. So, Fabian, we know uh, one of the important things that you have done is establishing the Fabian Cousteau Ocean Learning Center. Uh, so what motivated you to create this? That's a great question. Uh, you know, Jeff, I... I feel as a third generation storyteller and explorer that it's, um, you know, we, we always go out there and we can only tell about 1% of the story on film. And most of the time there's a conservation message these days uh, and one that's not always a, a happy one. And so I felt that as a storyteller, we needed to also engage people in proactive movements in in ways in which they might be able to be part of the solution rather than just feeling like they're part of the the problem uh so the ocean learning center is just that it's see learn do is to be able to go and protect baby sea turtles uh by going out there getting wet getting dirty uh collecting eggs in some cases depending on the country uh building pens uh, working with the local communities uh, which is extraordinarily important, having them uh, feel a vested interest in the solution building process and learning something about marine biology and, and just why oceans are so important, whether it's uh, a sea turtle, a piece of coral, um, a, a mangrove. Uh, why is that so important to a human being, a terrestrial creature? And uh, in that uh, ability to be able to, uh, to, to appreciate the ocean world, whether uh, you want to go diving or not, uh, is an integral part of uh, the solution building process uh, for all of us on land. Really, really cool. I had uh, firsthand experience uh, uh, in my kayak coming across a large sea turtle off the coast of South Carolina a few years back with my niece, and it was just it was awesome. The firsthand experience can change you in a big way, so that's cool that you're providing that for younger people. Uh, what types of research are you currently doing, and what's your uh, next big project on the horizon? Yeah, well, we're, you know, we're emotional creatures, so you always want to engage people emotionally and how they feel about things. And then you talk about the science and the logics. And so uh, a lot of these projects are are based in that. Obviously, uh, we, we do a lot of filming projects, whether it be just pure ocean exploration, including wrecks, to new species, to new weird places, uh, to building different technologies that can get us there, uh, including, of course, as, as we mentioned, before, which is Proteus, which is the uh, International Space Station of the Sea, or Advanced Underwater Research Station. That's one of our large projects. And everything in between, uh, trying to build new sensor technologies. And so that opens up, hopefully, people's minds that may want to go and dive into different careers uh, in the ocean. But at the end of the day, it's about empowering people and impassioning them into ocean conservation and consciousness, changing our language. Why are we saying throw something away? There is no such thing as a way in something like the earth, which is a closed loop system. It's our life support system. It's our natural resource bank account. And we need to start thinking about ways in which we can shepherd these uh, integral parts of why we exist what makes us possible uh, in our everyday lives, in people that have that struggle to make ends meet, that, that need to put a roof over the heads of their families. Uh, why does the ocean matter to them? You know, And at the end of the day, if they can get that and they start changing their behavior, then I think as a global community, we'll be in a much better place for our children. 
And one of the things that we often see and hear about when talking about climate change is rising ocean temperatures and sea level rise. We've got thermal expansion, melting ice, elevating the levels as well. Uh, so how is this impacting the ocean as a whole? Well, climate change, uh, it's a circular system, right? And the ocean plays a vital role as a great barometer, as a great uh, mitigator of, of temperature variations. It creates or helps create some of our storm patterns, of course, or at least it takes a, a big role in that. Uh, and so when the oceans, uh, the ocean temperatures rise, it changes the dynamic in the ocean, including, of course, coral reef ecosystems. Uh, look at uh, a coral reef as, a, as an underwater city and those hotels, those restaurants, those uh, medical stations, uh, the, 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 the coral reef ecosystem is home to about 70% of the species in, in the undersea world. Uh, most of the undersea uh, species depend on coral reef ecosystems at some point in their transient lives. Um, and in any event, the temperatures which affect coral reefs, as we've all heard a thousand and one times, also affect reproductive uh, cycles, uh, migratory patterns, and all sorts of other things that affect us, whether we be fishermen or whether we uh, just enjoy eating uh, or whether we enjoy farming. Uh, those things are fundamental uh, implications of what happens uh, if the water temperatures or the sea temperatures in case rise. And we're seeing the very real repercussions in our daily lives, uh, increased prices, uh, storms that are creating all sorts of chaos on land. You guys know this better than anyone. Uh, this is a vital part of the puzzle of climate change related issues. And we need to study the ocean in much, much deeper terms, literally and figuratively, in order to find better solutions and uh, maybe better approaches uh, for our storm mitigation. That's very well said. We appreciate uh, all of your insight, and we do want to thank you, Fabian Cousteau, uh, so much for joining us today. It's an honor to meet you and uh, talk to you and, uh, again, hear some of your stories here, just a small little slice of uh, some of the things you've been doing uh, and up to in recent years and months. Thanks again, Fabian. Thank you so much. Uh, it's Have our pleasure. Day. You too. And don't forget, when you have a question about weather, space, or science, you can always write to us or send us a video question at asktheexperts at accuweather.com. You can also call us at 888-566-6606. And coming up next, we're going to reveal three interesting things about legendary oceanographer Jacques Cousteau, Fabian's grandfather. Ask the Experts returns after a quick break. Welcome back to AccuWeather's Ask the Experts. It's now time for WeatherWise, and today, one of our three interesting things segments, we're going to give you three interesting things about Jacques Cousteau, the ocean exploration pioneer who became a household name in the 1960s and 70s and is still today. And his work continued with his son, Jean-Michel, and currently with his grandson, Fabian. So first, Jacques Cousteau is known as the father of scuba diving. In 1943, Cousteau co-invented the Aqualung, he and a French engineer patented a diving system with a demand regulator to control the oxygen release as needed. And this was the first self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. And as many of you know, that acronym is the origin of the word SCUBA. It revolutionized underwater exploration. In 1947, using the Aqualung, Cousteau set a world record for free diving. While doing underwater research for the French Navy, he reached a depth of 300 feet under the sea. His team's research enabled the timing techniques needed for the human body to adjust to the pressure changes of deep sea diving. And finally, how many times have you seen a shark cage? That's another Jacques Cousteau invention. In 1956, he created a metal cage that would protect divers. They could observe the ocean predators up close but the sturdy cage prevented the sharks from getting through to attack. Thanks so much for joining us here on AccuWeather's Ask the Experts. I'm Jeff Cornish, and remember, when you have a question about weather, space, or science, you can email us at asktheexperts at accuweather.com or call us at 888-566-6606. Have a great one. <music>